All right, guys. So I keep seeing more posts of um, with people getting their axes, axes. They're not getting um, completely perpendicular. And I fought with that for a little bit, and I took the whole thing apart. Um, it, actually, you know what? Even while building it, I still spent over over an hour. It had to. It was probably an hour and a half to two hours. Um, messing with it again, trying to get all the axes perpendicular and perfect and everything else. What I ended up doing is a bunch of little tweaks and I'm going to kind of give you guys a couple tips and pointers on what you can do if you're having the same issue. Hopefully, if nothing else, I can at least has a couple ideas to try. So let's do this. The first thing that I didn't like was the power supply would not mount up with the stinking bracket. I don't know why. I followed the manual to a T and it still wouldn't line up. They say that there's supposed to be 100 millimeters between the gantry this and your back what is this a, a wide corner plate i guess right here i had that distance and the power supply still wasn't lining up the holes on this were nowhere close to it i knew i was doing it right i just figured um either they changed their manual they left something out of their manual or the dimensions on this part has changed since they started shipping it out um i don't think it's always been like this i think it's just the last i don't know a couple months worth of kits probably because um People that are actually ordering the the completed Prusa is not necessarily saying anything about their power supply not being connected or their axis is being skewed. A fix to that is this power supply block. This uh, this is remixed from a user on Thingiverse, and I will link it in the description. And I think I would like to say that ultimately this is what actually saved me, that made my axes go perpendicular. And you can see. If I put these side by side, that this one has a slot instead of individual bolt holes. That's the key right there because obviously you can adjust it to whereas this one you're just stuck with. Oops. Whereas that one you're just stuck with wherever it is. You obviously have no play there whatsoever. So, what I would recommend doing is printing one of these off if you're still having issues getting it um, straightened up. If it doesn't solve your issue, I would say that this is going to help a lot nonetheless. It's going to make the whole frame a little bit sturdier because now you're adding another connection point between the gantry and the wide carriage, which is obviously going to help stabilize everything, the frame and everything, a lot better. All right, to install this, it's very, very easy. You got to take this whole back piece off right here. You know, just take the four bolts off. One, two, three, four, and slide this out. And then you can slide your old block off right here. And then you just slide your new one in place. You use two new bolts to hold it down. And there you go. I put washers on mine uh, because it's always good practice to use washers. And as you can see, <laughs> they don't match size. But that's okay. That doesn't really matter. All right. So now that we've talked about these pieces, let's... Uh talk about a couple other things that I did. Okay, first, ignore this tape. I broke the, the three millimeter filament that they send. I think it's I think that's what it is. That they send that you're supposed to use that's gonna keep your wires out of the way. I cut it thinking that they sent extra. <laughs> and I shouldn't have. So this is now my fix to keep these two from catching on each other. Um, I'm gonna print cable chains eventually. I just haven't gotten around to it. The next thing I noticed is these brackets up here. Now really what I should do is print off um, some stronger brackets because these have some give to them. And uh, the manual tells you when you're adjusting it, when you're adjusting the Z to take these all the way up until they click. Well, the problem with that is these aren't strong enough for that. If it was a complete piece, it might work. If it was a little bit thicker, it would probably work too. But uh, the fact that these are so thin means that they get bent. They have some give to them. So when you take these all the way up and they're maxing out, well, this one could be higher than this one. Obviously, that's not going to give you a perfectly level bed. And that could cause issues as well because, well, it's common sense. It's not level. So what I recommend doing for this, what I did is I loosened both sides and I went by eye and I adjusted um, based on how much of the top part I could see on each side. If you get on eye level with this, you'll see what I'm talking about. This side, when I first put it on, was a little bit higher on one corner than um, the side was. So I put them all back down the way they were. Um, and now I don't let I don't let my, my motors um, 
click when they get to the top like the manual says to do. I eyeball it. When they both get to the very top, I'll make sure that they're both the same distance away from this, that there's an even gap in between both of these. Or the good thing about these rods is they spin pretty easily. I guess it has to do with the motors too, but you just take them and you turn it. One little turn, you'll be able to see it move up and down just a little bit, and that's enough to make the perfect adjustment that you need for them. All right, so next on my list. What you use as a level makes a huge difference in what you're going to come out with. That's It's the same with the tape measure. You never buy a cheap tape measure, or you never use multiple tape measures during a project because each one reads a little bit differently. Um, so the same thing goes with rulers or squares. You don't use cheap squares. And you always stick with the same square. You don't use this one and then decide, oh, well, I'm going to use this carpenter square right here. That's going to be good. No, you stick with one square, and that's what you're going to use the whole time. Now, I would recommend spending a little bit more money and getting a machine a square. They're, they're going to be much more precise than, uh, let's say, a household ruler. I've got a couple different machinist squares uh, from my offer of fabrication stuff that I do, which is probably a godsend because it's, it's helped me make sure that my things are actually level. But what I use most of, I didn't, I didn't use this one too much. This is what I used. I love it because it's small. It's sturdy, so I know I'm not going to bend it on something like this. You're not going to bend this, and you're using it for something small like this, so it's you can't go wrong with it. Now if I'm doing smaller measurements, um, you know, things smaller than a couple inches, I'll use a pair of calipers. If you're working with 3D printing, you've got to have a set of calipers anyways, in my opinion. Uh, you've got to be able to check measurements of stuff that you're printing off to make sure that everything's coming out as precise as what it needs to be. Especially when you're prototyping parts. It's a must have. So always double check your measurements too, your distances between things in here that the manual that says you're supposed to have X amount of distance from Y to Z. Um, always double check it, if not triple check it. it it's not going to hurt anything. I like to have everything completely precise, but that could also be the perfectionist in me. So definitely use your calipers to check all your measurements on here. That's another way you're going to make sure that you're getting your frame and your wide carriage um, set up the way that it's supposed to be. This next part may not go for everybody. It goes for me because it was an issue I was having personally. And when talking to uh, Prusa customer service, they wanted to say that I should check my whole wide carriage measurements, even though I have multiple times. But I'll show you what I did to fix my issue. You see this right here? Let me get my flashlight on it. Yeah, there we go. See how it's so close to the gantry? Well, my bed was actually hitting it. The screw on the bottom was actually hitting the gantry. And yes, I checked to make sure that this was all the way down and that the other side was all the way down, of course. But it was still hitting. Now, what I did to fix it is I just took that little screw and I sanded the top of it down. After quadruple checking, making sure that the white carriage was all the way down in the gantry, I just sanded that down to make sure it didn't hit anymore. And that solved that problem. Now, another thing you can do is you can take your square, your rods, to make sure that you've got a perfect square. And if you don't, well, then you need to go back and check your measurements again. And as you can see, no gaps. Mine is perfectly square. And you want to check both sides as well. Oh, paradox. Alright, technical difficulties. My gimbal that I've been using to record just messed up. and I don't know what the heck is going on with it. I can't get it to work. Could be the batteries, but I messed with it for about an hour. Still can't get it working, so I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm just going to finish this video with one of my phones. So, as I was saying before that break, was that I'm filming vertical and I shouldn't be. That's what I was saying. Does that look better? I think so. Okay, anyways, let's try this again. So what you want to do is take a perpendicular line. If you're looking down at it from overhead, you want to make sure that that line that you chose runs completely even with your rod. This is the fourth time that I've probably recorded it because the stinking gimbal failed. So another thing you can check too is that your bearings are not elevated on one side. So if you're looking down at it, you don't want one side to be you know, sticking out a little bit because that's obviously going to make your bed skew. Same with down here at this side at the bottom. It looks like mine can go forward just a little bit, but the way that they're sitting in there, you can see it's not causing a gap, so that's not going to cause me any issue. Also, when you have it sitting on a flat surface, make sure that there is a gap 
between your gantry and your flat surface and that your wires are not being pinched by it. Um, normally your bed's gonna sit up a little bit higher anyways. As you can see, I've got my feet off. Oh, and see how it's elevated? It's because of this. It's because of your case, my case right now. So anyways, this is perfectly level. But you don't want the wires pinched. Now keep in mind that if you put the felt pads on, um, it's gonna sit just a little bit higher anyways, but it's always, it's always good to make sure that you don't have anything that's hanging way too low or that's hanging a lot lower than it should be just so that you don't have any future issues with any of that. All right guys, I think that's it. I don't think I missed anything. If you followed all those steps and you followed the guide that I'm gonna link to in the description that tells you all of the measurements that you're supposed to have, you should be fine. There's no reason why you'd be skewed. If you have any issues with it, let me know. I'll try my best to help. You could also reach out to Prusa Customer Service because they are they're 24 seven. They're really good at getting back to you. And the guys really have a lot of knowledge over there. So if you're having an issue, likely they can help you with it. I think I covered everything this time that I wanted to cover. I'm gonna give a couple of these away. I'll print, this is, uh, I'll print them all in white just because it's some new filament that I want to, where is it? I don't have it on here anymore. Cause it's some new filament that I want to try out. Um, it looks pretty good, especially if you guys can see how that's printed. I'll be giving a handful of these away. The first five people to comment on the video to say that they want one of these and they are in the US will get one. I will send one to you uh, free of charge. I, I bet it's probably not even 10 cents to send anyways. So if you've enjoyed this video and I've helped you out, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe. So ladies and gents, this has been Cody, your improper engineer. And hope you have a great day.